Good evening. We'd like to uh, bring another post to you today uh, concerning the uh, uh, premillennial kingdom. Uh, we had done a post prior on this uh, on this channel, and uh, we covered uh, uh, one angle from uh, a different point of view, uh, showing this uh, <clears throat> premillennial kingdom uh, that we as SDA. Uh, generally don't know and are ignorant of it um, and th the reason why is because as we've man mentioned many times before we uh, we've rejected the Elijah message that was sent from the Lord to us the remnant people the Seventh-day Adventist and uh, so this purpose of this post is to go into a uh, another angle so that you can see from Scripture in a different way the clear I am I mean clear uh, foretelling of this premillennial phase of his kingdom. This uh, purpose of this, as you'll see in this report, and uh, 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 part two, we're going to do a two-part post here, um, that uh, there's a reason why the Lord wants this to happen. Um, several reasons, and, and we'll go into that, and uh, hopefully you'll see this more clearly. So uh, we'll begin this post now. Uh, this week the thought occurred of how the Jews of old had steadfastly looked and looked for any signs of the Lord's kingdom on earth to be established. So much so that they ignored other more important scriptures. Yet today we as his remnant people, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, aren't looking for it. And we are the ones who the prophecies are directed to. Amazingly, how it is amazing how both the Jews of old and us today, for the most part, are guilty of not searching the scriptures to know them well. Uh, <clears throat> in our first part of this God's Kingdom report, we would like to once again show the beauty of the upcoming premillennial kingdom. A kingdom that first starts out on this earth before the millennial reign in heaven. Many within our SDA church are unaware of this premillennial stage that, w that exists, but as we go into various scriptures, it becomes very clear of how God will establish his kingdom in front of the heathen. The Lord's Elijah message has now uncovered these beautiful promises for us. Uh, one of the things that we as um, SDA uh, profess to believe in the spirit of prophecy which was brought to us by the faithful prophetess Ellen White. Uh, many SDA today claim and, and point to many quotes and references from uh, Ellen White. I shouldn't say many, she, she doesn't go into the, uh, the uh, this, uh, some of the scriptures that point to this premillennial kingdom uh, too much, but some of the uh, writings uh, they point to and say, ah, look at that, see, there's not going to be any premillennial kingdom, and yet they, they fail to realize that Ellen White, our beloved prophet, was not the last prophetess uh, foretold in the scriptures to come to us, the remedy church. Malachi 4.5, as we well know, uh, predicts a male prophet, Elijah, to come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, the purpose of that was to establish all uh, uh, restoring truth. He was to start the seeds of the restoration, as, as the Lord said. Uh, Elijah will come first and restore all things. So these are the seeds that start the restoration that was brought to the church by Victor T. Hoddoff, who we as uh, present truth believers uh, truly know was the Lord pro uh, prophesied Elijah to come to the church. Um, but Ellen White doesn't go into the pre-millennial kingdom much, but Brother Hoddoff does. And this was his job to show and illuminate the scriptures so that we would have a clear conception of the truth that lies therein. And it shows that we have a, a phase coming up before the Lord comes in the clouds 
that will truly be phenomenal. It will be a awesome situation in sight based in Israel. So uh, let's continue. Let us now search and behold the marvelous things to come in God's unconditional word. Last week we pointed out who is God's Israel today. We did a post prior to this one. This one was done October uh, of uh, 2013 and prior to that we did a post called who is the Israel of today. These are those who are to be the beneficiaries of the promises as Ellen White explains. That which God proposed to do for the world through Israel, the chosen nation, he will finally accomplish through his church on earth today. He has led out of his vineyard unto other husband, husbandmen, even to his covenant-keeping people, who faithfully render him the fruits in their seasons. Never has the Lord been without true representation representatives on this earth who have made his interests their own. These witnesses for God are numbered among the spiritual Israel and to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to his ancient people. Let me repeat that again. These witnesses for God are numbered among the spiritual Israel and to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to his ancient pe people. Prophet and Kings, page 713 and 714. So here we see that our Lord has made numerous promises to the Jews of old. And uh, the Spirit of Prophecies clearly says that all those promises will be kept, but they'll be kept with today's spiritual Israel, the SDA remnant church. And uh, when we know about the covenant promises, we know that one of them were clearly, was clearly said in Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Micah, all these different prophecies foretold of a beautiful land that the people will come into and enjoy and, re and rejoice because the Lord will be in their midst. And as we'll go into it, we'll find out that this prophesied land is not the new earth. And it's not the, 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 in the heavens. Okay, the, the Jews held the following promise close to heart as one of their basics on the kingdom of, the, of God on earth. <clears throat> and here's what the Jews look to. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, <clears throat> and upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform, perform this. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. As Seventh-day Adventists, we are well aware <coughs> excuse me, of the fact that Jesus, when Jesus comes again, He will indeed take His saints home to heaven. And to be with Him a thousand years, we shall afterward descend in the holy city to live here in a newly created earth. This is a marvelous thing, and that will be a wonderful time. We, will, we look forward to that time. Oh yes, we surely do. But what? of the kingdom that was promised to Israel and to Judah. What of that kingdom? When they therefore had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the, or, or the times of the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. In other words, he did not tell them that the kingdom was not to be established. He simply said it is not for them to know when. Of course we know it was not to be in their day, but he did not tell them that. Perhaps it would have discouraged them, kept them from preaching the gospel with all their might. But the Lord in his wisdom kept that from them. 
But the Bible does tell us when the kingdom of God's glory is going to be established in its beginning. Before we continue, it is important to note that this establishment of the kingdom, per the scriptures, will not be in heaven, as we SDA are commonly taught. It's right here on earth, and the Lord's great name will finally be exalted by true representations, uh, those who walk the walk and talk the talk. Let us look at some specific promises found in Jeremiah. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. Okay, let's go over this, um, this quote a little bit. Uh, we see that the promises made through Jeremiah from the Lord that the people of Israel and Judah, in other words, the ten tribes and the two tribes, will return to the land which he gave their forefathers. Has that ever happened since Jeremiah's day? It has not happened. Judah is claimed, as we know today, to return to the land, the, the, the Jews there currently. Uh, but that's, that's another subject altogether, which we'll, we'll deal, delve with later. But uh, so, uh, looking at this promise, we see that it's 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 a future. Someday he will. And you know another thing about this quote is that uh, many SDA read something like this and say, "Well, that was conditional." Well, if you look at the context of what the Lord said, there's no conditions. It's I will, I shall. When somebody says, I will and I shall, unless they prefigure that with a condition, unless you do in this, this, and this, I shall, then that's conditional. But there's no such preconditions on these words. So, uh, just as our prophets had said, we must take the Bible as it reads. Great Constituent, Mercy, page uh, 598. So, clearly, we see that there's a promise made. So let's continue. What is important to know in this promise is that in Jeremiah's day only two tribes of Judah returned. This promise calls for all twelve tribes to return. The ten tribes of Israel were dispersed among the nations and have never returned to this day. So this remains yet to be fulfilled, lest God make an empty promise. Also it's important to point out that this is unconditional. The words I will and they shall are as any knowledgeable English student knows without conditions. To solify, to, to solify this promise is yet future, we read. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath done it, until he hath performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days you shall consider it. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 24. Here we see clearly that us, the remnant church, shall consider it. This is why we as Davidian Seventh-day Adventists are pleading with our brothers in the SDA church. We are under the same umbrella of the Seventh-day Adventist church, but we are those that accept the further light. The fourth angel, as it were, that has the additional light that joins the third angel. And uh, that's another subject altogether, but there's clearly it, it shows an additional message is coming to the church. And this is what it's all about. The pre-millennial kingdom, the warning of Ezekiel 9, the church judgment, and the uh, pleading to reform in our church. This is the three pillars of the Elijah message that we need to take up. We need to say, Lord, I'm an open book. Speak to me. And this, this is what he will do. All right, we are living in the latter days, and as such, we now consider it. We now know that this promise will be fulfilled as we are revealed his upcoming premillennial kingdom on earth. His words will not return void. Praise the Lord. Thus, we see very clearly that this prophecy begins 
with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Church of the Last Days, Laodicean Church. And we have just read from inspiration that all the covenant promises that were made to ancient Israel are to be filled, fulfilled with us today. It's important to remember one of the prime covenant promises throughout the scriptures was that he would return his people to his land. And so when the spirit of prophecy says all covenant promises, not 80% of them or 9 out of 10, uh, all covenant promises will be re will be fulfilled with his people that is us the SDA church will receive the covenant promises now however that's only for those who believe as we went over went over many times before Ezekiel 9 will affect a church uh, cleansing and it's solemn but we cannot argue with the word the word clearly says this, and who am I, who are you, to say, that's not going to happen. No, no, we've got a different plan. No, we don't have a different plan. The Lord's plan's coming whether we want it or not. Okay, um, now why would God want his people back there? Well, to fulfill his promise, for sure. The promise that he made to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Israel. He vowed to them that he would have a kingdom, that they would have a kingdom. Now, you know why the disciples asked uh, Jesus, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Now, we remember that the, the, the disciples only knew about the earthly kingdom. They had no clue about the, pre, uh, the thousand year reign in heaven and all these other things because that was later light that they weren't aware of. So, Jesus spoke to them on their level. And he says, it's not for you to know, but the Father will surely do it in his own time. So he was confirming that their understanding of the kingdom was correct. However, they would not know it until that time comes. So um, this is very important to realize that the Lord confirmed their understanding of the kingdom, which was on earth. Okay, um... Uh, they could not just shove the prophecies aside. They understood that it must be fulfilled because God promised it, promised it. And Jesus told them that it was not for them to know the times, but in the latter days, Jeremiah proclaims it to be. God does not make a mistake. He is always right. His word does not return void. It's not like us humans, you know. We'll say one thing and tomorrow we'll forget all about it. The Lord's word, once it goes out of his mouth, and it's a promise, it has to be fulfilled. It cannot be forgotten about, changed, uh, swept under the rug. No, no. His word is life. His word is truth. His, his word will be fulfilled. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, we find something that should make every doubter sit up straight. Carefully observe the promises given, and then we'll discuss what makes these inspired words one of the clearest of all scriptures as to the premillennial kingdom. Isaiah chapter 11, we're going to go into. This is certainly something that all present truth believers should have as their one of their go-to references explaining the premillennial kingdom to any of our brothers that we have a study with or are doubtful about the premillennial kingdom. If we'll follow this closely, there can be no doubt that the premillennial kingdom must exist, and it'll be in front of the heathen, as it says. And there shall come forth, Isaiah 11.1, 1, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But the righteousness shall he judge the but with righteousness, righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with uh, equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and the breath of his lips of his lips shall he slay the wicked. 
and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf shall lie down with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and young lion and fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed them. The young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play in the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand over the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for insight of the people, and to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time, to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. This was Isaiah 1. Isaiah chapter 11, 1 through 12. Now, you're probably thinking that this is referring to the new earth, and, and, and this is one of the things that the SDA uh, standard teaching uh, teaches us, that, oh, this is all ex explaining the new earth. They don't think deeply about this, as we'll go over. Uh, well, yes, we do understand that in the new earth, everything will be peaceful, everything will be marvelous. Pretty much, as described here, will be similar. But this prof prophecy, brothers and sisters, is not speaking about the new earth. Isaiah 65, 9, 20 speaks about the new earth. It tells how the wolf shall lie down with the lamb, very similar to that of chapter 11. But here are three main reasons why we cannot be speaking about the new earth. Isaiah 11, 1 uh, through 12 is speaking about a time before Jesus comes. The first reason. It mentions in verse 10 that when the kingdom is established, when the wolf is lying down with the lamb, when the leopard is lying down with the kid, it says in verse 10 that in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign. That means a standard or a flag for the people. And to it shall the Gentiles seek brothers and sisters. There will be no Gentiles or strangers or unbelievers in heaven or in the new earth. So here Isaiah cannot be speaking about the new earth or heaven. This prophecy is talking about time, about a time when unbelievers, Gentiles, strangers, will be flocking to the kingdom. They will be coming to join God's people. But this again cannot happen in heaven or on earth. Probation will already have been closed by then. So we see that in the very first uh, reason that we, we uncover, uh, verse 10 clearly shows a <coughs> powerful sign. Gentiles will not exist in heaven or on earth, the new earth. So when all this happens, the kids lie, the, the lions lie, lying down with the lamb, and the wolf with the lamb, and, and, and uh, the, the little kid is playing with the uh, dangerous uh, uh, snake. Uh, this has never happened before, and so it's, it, it's, it's, it's a prophecy that's yet to be fulfilled. So, one of the things that we enjoy about reading this promise from the Lord is that these things will happen. And praise the Lord for that. Now with that in mind, you can look at the next verse, and that is verse 11. We shall read. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. 
Here the Lord says he is going to reach out and gather his people. Just like he did anciently, except he will gather from Egypt. He will not gather from Egypt alone this time, but from all the islands of the sea. So, you know, the United States is a huge, huge island, so this includes the United States as well. And uh, and verses uh, 12 says that he will gather them from the four corners of the earth. You can see, brothers and sisters, that the Isaiah 11.11 11 must apply to a time when you can have Gentiles seeking the kingdom, wanting to know more about God and his people. And he is going to gather his people from all over the world. That has to be premillennial. Not after, but during. Not, uh, but before. Now, with this in mind, we can surely see that it is talking about now, our time, in the days of these kings, the, the latter days. But you may be saying again that this is conditional. Brothers and sisters, let's focus on the fact that there are no conditions attached here. What God says he will do, and unless he says otherwise, we are to accept what he says. Whatever is uttered from his mouth, he will not change. No buts or maybes. It is very plain. Plain. It is a prophecy that will be filled. The Bible says exactly what God is going to do in the days of these kings. Next, we look at a more more reasons that Isaiah's prophetic word applied to the upcoming earthly kingdom before the Lord returns in the clouds. One thing should be clear is that this kingdom will be uh, what is termed a theocracy. Uh, that means a church kingdom that will be, be based out of Israel, the land he promises remnant people in the scriptures. That kingdom will not be considered a world governing kingdom because we know that the mark of the beast will be set up at this time as well. Uh, one of the things we want to make sure to understand is that when we're talking about this premillennial kingdom, uh, from Israel. This will be a church kingdom, as we said. But uh, the purpose of this kingdom is to bring God, uh, God's people all out from all over the world out of false religions, out of false teachings, into the true house of God. Therefore, the focus will be on, on, uh, on the Lord and, and His ways. At the same time, as we know in the Scriptures, it's predicted that Satan will counter this by setting up a Sunday law that will compel the great amount of people around the world to uh, join a false religion, a Sunday worship religion, where they're going to call Sunday worshiping a necessity for, for the reasons that uh, there's uh, tr trouble, strife, they've just witnessed a world war in, in Israel, so all these things are going to trouble the people, and they're going to claim We've got to get right with the Lord and behind the Pope's cheerleading. And uh, the United States will be a leader in, in this regard in establishing the Sunday law. Uh, this government will be set up, a counter-government, to the Lord's theo theocratic uh, religious kingdom. So uh, we want to make sure that this kingdom that's talking about here is not going to be a governmental kingdom as we know it today. Uh, in other words, armies uh, set up and uh, formal courts and, and all these other you know things that a normal uh, uh, nation has. It'll be based on the Lord's way, a totally different way of of of, of, uh, of uh, government, and that's the way the Lord intended our real government to be. So this will be a uh, example for the people to see righteousness in in action, in action. Okay, uh, the two kingdoms uh, will be directly opposed, and as such, people will have a clear-cut idea which side to choose and join up with. The main proponent, pro 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 I can't say that, proponent, is either to worship him corporally on the so-called Lord's Day, which is promoted as Sunday, or the biblical Sabbath, which starts at sunset Friday evening and ends at sunset Saturday evening. The Lord is going to pull out all stops and one last witness to mankind. Sort of like, here I am, are you going to join me? 
This will be the time as prophesied by our prophetess. The light that was shed upon the waiting ones penetrated everywhere. And those in the churches who had any light, who had not heard and re rejected the three, three angels' messages, obeyed the call and left the fallen churches. This is a time where the 144,000 are going out and proclaiming the three angels' message in addition to that fourth angel message to come out of the church, reform, get back with God's house. Many had come to years of accountability since these messages had been given. The light shone upon them, and they were privileged to choose life or, or death. Some chose life, and they took their stand with those who were looking for their Lord and keeping all His commandments. The third message was do its work. All were to be tested upon it. The precious ones were to be called out from the religious bodies. A compelling power moved the honest. While the manifestation of power of God brought a fear and restraint upon the unbelieving relatives and friends so that they dared not, neither had they power, to hinder those who felt the work of the Spirit of God upon them. The last call was carried even to the poor slaves. The previous among them poured uh, forth their sounds of rapturous joy and prospect of happy deliverance. Uh, the servants of God in power with power from on high with their faces lit up and shining with holy consecration went forth to proclaim the message from heaven. Souls were scattered all through the religious bodies answered the call and the precious were hurried out of the doomed churches as Lot was hurried out of Sodom before her destru destruction. God's people were strengthened by the excellent glory which rested upon them in rich abundance and prepared them to endure the hour of temptation. I heard everywhere a multiple of voices. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Early writings, page 278 and 279. So here she goes into the beautiful time of the loud cry. And the loud cry is based on... Uh, going to be based out of the uh, land of Israel. It's going to be the epicenter, the command post from the, for where the loud cry is going to go to the world. So this will be a great time and uh, a uh, time that Isaiah prophesied where the lamb shall lie down with the wolf and the kid will play with the dangerous snake. All this will happen in the land of Israel pre-millennial as a witness, a final witness to the world. And can you imagine with today's TV and electronic uh, media and so forth, all the images and all the reports coming out of the land of Israel about these great things? The Lord will be pleading in a great way for the whole world. The 144,000 are the servants that survive Ezekiel 9 church judgment in the SDA church. They're the ones that are going to be headline news around the world doing the miracles, doing the power that the Lord uh, uh, pours out on them. And as such, the honest of heart will be, come out of uh, the Babylon churches. Now Babylon, as we know, means confusion. So, so many Protestant churches today are confused. They don't have a clue about many of the scriptures. They teach falsely that Sunday is the day of worship. This is their big, big uh, mistake. And they teach falsely that the Jews over there today are the uh, recipients of all these prophecies like in Isaiah and all these other things. World War III is happening. And that's going to clear out the land of Israel so that the 144,000 can return and thereby set up his pure church, his beginning phase of the premillennial kingdom. And... Uh, this kingdom will be transformed into the thousand years, but it starts here on earth to gather in the great multitude from the Babylon churches. So let's continue. Uh, one thing we should understand here is that during this glorious time of miracles and calling out people, the people of God must come out and get go into a righteous place where God wants them. Where will that be? It will be his holy land, Israel. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, 
that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth which brought him brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Oh, this is so beautiful. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 7 and 8. I'll read it again. Therefore, behold, the days saith the Lord, uh, they shall, uh, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel the land of Egypt. But, the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I have driven them. They shall dwell in their own land. My brothers and sisters, the above promises have never happened to this very day. We know that God's word cannot return void. You and I say, may shoot at the wind in our speaking, but God's word is life. So next uh, post we will go into more about Isaiah's prophetic words in regard to this upcoming uh, kingdom before the Lord returns in his clouds. And we'll also look at Ezekiel's prophecies uh, that explain more of this premillennial kingdom as well. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this, uh, this post on the part one of the, uh, the kingdom come. Uh, for those of you interested, we have a, a weekly blog on our blog, God's Love and Law, and we'll post that under the information of this post here so that you can have the link to see that. We have update uh, post every uh, Friday evening, and uh, they range in topics from, uh, uh, we did, for instance, a, a post uh, called The Collection Box, how uh, Jesus and, and, and the Old Testament times showed that the proper way for us to pay tithes is in the collection box in the rear uh, or in the foyer or in the entrance to the church uh, uh, you know some of the uh, spaces before you actually enter into the sanctuary and uh, so we did a post on the collection box how you know today unfortunately the SDA <coughs> church uh, has, has, has accepted and, and, and tr through tra tradition followed the Roman Catholic custom of passing the bag around in the church for the tithes. Just an abomination to the Lord. And I, I'm not just saying this, but you look at the history and, and, and you can see this post that we posted uh, called the collection box, uh, where there's uh, ample, overwhelming evidence that the Lord approves of a certain way of, of, of dealing with the tithes on the Sabbath. And, um, and that's the collection box. So uh, we hope you've been blessed with this post, and we'll continue uh, very soon to post the second part of the uh, Thy Kingdom Co Come uh, topic here. And uh, we'd like to close with prayer. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to, to preach your word again today. Uh, this kingdom is very important, and we as SDA need to know it because this is your plan. This is what your word says. And if we can take up your plans, spread them, obey them, we are walking right with you. So we ask that you reach out, create in us, uh, our people, our SDA people, the spirit of Berean, that they may search that these things are so. And only by searching will they know. If they blindly believe rumors, believe flesh like your word says those who lean on flesh shall be cursed then they shall never know so we pray that this post reaches their hearts in our powerful Savior's name Jesus Christ